comes into your mind if you hear of animal experiments? Probably rabbits forced to smoke, or hamsters with cosmetic products being dripped into their eyes. All in order to prove the alleged harmlessness of those products for mankind and their usefulness for medical progress. There are fewer pictures of it in the press these days, even though the tests are continuing, and if they're mentioned at all, they are represented as doing no harm to the animals. Yet each year millions of animals suffer and die in the laboratories, and their numbers are increasing. All this is always justified by pointing out the future benefits for people. But if you take a closer look at these animal experiments, then their benefits look doubtful because animals are not humans. In spite of the close relationship, people and animals differ from each other. They have different metabolisms and show different reactions to many substances. In humans, thalidomide causes malformations but not in the usual experimental animals. The painkiller paracetamol is okay with people, but poison for cats. Arsenic, which is poisonous for people, does no harm to sheep. Substances like varnishes, dyes, bitumen, silicon, industrial lubricants or fuels are pumped by tubes into the stomachs of rats for months, yet there's little evidence of the effects these substances might have on man. The supposed comparability has long been refuted, and yet again and again new animal experiments are being conducted in the same way. Animals do not suffer from diseases of civilization which are caused by man's unhealthy lifestyle. Consequently, each tested animal must first be made sick. Diabetes in animals is caused by destroying the cells of the pancreas with poison. Heart attacks are caused by constriction of the coronary arteries. Arteriosclerosis is caused by sending electric impulses through the arteries. The guts of mice are perforated to trigger a painful peritonitis with sepsis. In addition, there are purpose-made animals who are being bred in a way that they suffer from certain diseases or conditions or to serve as a stock of spare organ parts. But an imitation of symptoms has nothing to do with human diseases and their causes. The treatment of those animals who have been sickened artificially is often even successful, but it does not mean that the treatment actually helps man, even if it previously worked in a million mice with cancer. Medicines that were successful in animal experiments fail in more than 90% of later clinical trials on people because they either do not work or they have too many side effects. Experiments that concern the mind and personal feelings are particularly absurd. Animals cannot talk. Yet, often using painful measures, they're made to react in a way that's claimed to be a symptom of a certain mental illness. For example, rats are subjected to electric shocks to make them feel desperate in order to study depression. Such assumptions that cannot be founded on anything often have outcomes that are completely contradictory. Researchers then cheerfully conclude that they need more tests of the same pattern to get to the bottom of these contradictions. Often, the so-called results are completely trivial. Hamsters are killed during hibernation to prove that the period of rest saves the nerve tissue from Alzheimer's. Alcohol is injected into the abdomen of baby rats and later they undergo behavioural tests. The conclusion is that alcohol is not good for children and youngsters. Guinea pigs have to endure noise trauma in order to prove that noise causes hearing impairment. The life of animals in the laboratories is short and full of pain. They are fed with too little or too much food. They are prevented from moving. They are scalded with boiling water or infected with germs. And they are operated and crippled. Monkeys' heads are fixated and they only get water as long as they don't struggle. Rats are starved until their weight is less than half of their normal weight to study the effects of anorexia. 
Electric shocks force mice to run until they break down in utter exhaustion. Currently, no researcher has to justify himself for inflicting pain on animals. His studies are only evaluated by being published in scientific journals and by obtaining further research funds. The approving authorities only check the compliance of formalities, but not whether the approach of research makes sense. In addition, a whole branch of industry profits from breeding animals for testing purposes, from keeping them in cages, and from discarding them in the end. All this is defended with an alleged benefit for mankind, even when the only aim is making profit. But our aim should be medicine-free from animal experiments, where research on the causes for diseases and on the prevention of diseases is in the foreground. In contrast to animal experimentation, contemporary research methods that use human cell cultures or microchips provide results which are significant for mankind. Medical progress is important, but animal experiments are the wrong way. The beauty industry gives us an array of products we love to use every day. Sadly, they don't always source the ingredients for these products in the most ethical way. While you may love lipstick, eyeshadow, and mascara, after watching this video, you might second your beauty routine. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Today we are showing you 10 beauty products you'll never buy again knowing how they are made. Say goodbye to your lipstick because you'll never look at it the same way again. Deodorant. Most people use deodorant every day to keep them smelling fresh regardless of the temperature outside. Did you know that the act of trying to stay smell-free isn't a new idea? In fact, it was the Egyptians who first created scented bathing by adding perfumes to their armpits. While we still want our pits to remain odorless, we have gone to some drastic measures to do so. For some reason, scientists started making the process so much more complicated than its Egyptian roots. One way they have done this is by adding bacteria-fighting preservatives called parabens. The scary thing about parabens is that some forms are known to mimic estrogen hormones in our body cells. This is concerning because estrogen is sometimes correlated with breast cancer, so it wouldn't be a big leap to think parabens can increase the risk of breast cancer as well. Thankfully, at this point, there is no scientific evidence that parabens cause cancer, but deodorant isn't out of the cancer-causing water yet. That's because many deodorant brands add aluminum to their odor-neutralizing sticks to help block sweat glands. Now that science has accused aluminum of possibly causing breast cancer, the government has actually regulated how much can go in deodorant products. Pretty scary, right? Considering your body becomes immune to deodorant every six months and you don't really need it in the first place, it might be time to start rethinking the way you stay fresh. Mascara. Wearing mascara is pretty much the only universally accepted form of makeup. Whether you like to go full glam or keep it natural, there is a good chance you are going to swipe on some mascara. So, since it is widely used, it must be safe, right? Well, in most cases, yes, but after three months, it's best to toss this product out. Sadly, there wasn't anything the ladies of the early 20th century could do to save themselves from a particular harmful eyelash product. The product, Lash Lure, was supposed to be a permanent eyelash dye, but after several dozen women became blind, it was pulled off shelves. That doesn't mean there aren't some controversial ingredients lurking inside your tube of modern mascara. Did you know that most brands add mercury to their mascara formulas? Don't worry, it's not enough to be harmful, but the fact that it is getting that close to our eyes does freak us out a bit. Then there is the fact that some mascaras contain fish scales in them. The ingredient, guanine, is found in several beauty products. Guanine is made from crushing up fish scales and putting them in products. It helps make pigments more intense, and it's also known to provide a little shimmer as well. Though this may sound a bit gross, it's not as bad as the crocodile dung that ancient Egyptians used to add to their version of the lash popping product. Soap. Considering early forms of soap date back to 2800 BC, it's safe to say that pretty much everyone has used some form of soap. If you haven't, you might want to check your bathing routine. Even though it's a commonly used product, that doesn't mean all soaps are created equally. If you're using a soap product and it has the word urea on its ingredients list, it's time to find something new. 
Forms of this substance, such as diazolidinyl urea, are known to release a chemical called formaldehyde. Though it may be in low doses, this chemical is harmful to human skin and the respiratory system. We aren't sure how anything like that ended up in our bath products, but apparently, urea is very common. Another concerning chemical commonly added to soaps is something called triclosan. This substance is actually a pesticide that has antibacterial and antifungal properties. While we love the fact that it could rid our body of bacteria and fungus, the fact that it is a pesticide is enough for us to want to keep it as far away as possible. This next ingredient isn't necessarily helpful, but doctors still warn against using it. That product is soap made from breast milk. Yes, it is actually a thing. The reason it is frowned upon is because many beneficial ingredients in breast milk are destroyed in the soap making process. Not to mention that it could possibly transfer harmful diseases. Shaving cream. If you aren't a fan of getting nicks from shaving, there is a good chance you use shaving cream. This product helps moisturize the skin as it protects it. So what's the problem? While most shaving creams contain about 80% water, the rest of the ingredients are enough to make you want to skip it all together. There's actually a chemical in shaving cream that is commonly found in brake fluid and antifreeze. This ingredient is called propylene glycol, and it's added to many pressurized canned beauty products, like shaving cream. The FDA says this substance is generally recognized as safe, but that might not actually be the case. Propylene glycol is linked to medical conditions like kidney abnormalities and asthma, neither of which sound like things you'd want from a product you put on your face. Then there's the fact that many shaving creams contain mineral oil. While it sounds like it should be organic, organic and green, mineral oil is a byproduct of petroleum used for gasoline production. Um, what? Though it might help moisturize your skin, something that is derived from the fuel you put in your car has no business in your shaving cream, don't you think? Considering many people believe mineral oil also clogs your pores, you should go ahead and get rid of any product containing this ingredient. Moisturizer Anyone prone to dry skin knows that slathering on moisturizer can be a lifesaver. Plus, many lotions contain perfumes that can help you smell amazing throughout the day. Considering there are some benefits to using moisturizer every day, you should make sure you are staying away from products that contain harmful ingredients. A controversial substance found in many lotions is squalane. If you don't know what squalane is, let us tell you. It is a moisturizing ingredient that is made from shark liver oil. Because sharks rarely suffer from cancer, doctors first started using shark liver oil as a way to treat cancer. But because it also has moisturizing properties, it didn't take long for the beauty industry to add squalane to its products as well. The United Nations now reports that 50 species of sharks are fished for their oils, and some of them are turning up on the endangered list because of it. Many times their livers are the only things used from the shark, and after it is extracted, the rest of the shark is thrown back into the ocean. All this just because people have dry skin. While many people could care less how their beauty products are made, if you are someone who is against animal-based products, you should definitely stay away from anything listing squalane as an ingredient. Eyeshadow. Using eyeshadow is a great way to accentuate your peepers, and it's another beauty product that we have thanks to ancient Egyptians. They used to make their eyeshadow from things like coal, burnt almonds, and even lead. While we have since found out that lead isn't the best ingredient to add to anything, there are still some modern ingredients that are equally as concerning. If any of the ingredients we've already talked about have you worried, then eyeshadow might be your worst nightmare. That's because this type of makeup has pretty much everything we've already listed lurking inside. Squalane? Check. Mineral oil? Check. Guanine? Check. You can see where we're going with this. And because it is a crazy mixture of everything you don't want in your makeup, there can't be anything else harmful they can add, right? We're sorry to tell you, it actually gets worse. Many eyeshadows contain a substance called tallow. We will get into how it is made later in the video, but just know it isn't pretty. Another ingredient to be wary of is talc. This mostly has to do with where the talc comes from. Certain mines where talc is derived can cause it to become toxic because it's contaminated with chemicals similar to asbestos. Sounds fun, right? High-end facial creams. When it comes to beauty products, many people associate larger price tags with better results. Though high-end facial creams can pack a punch, they also do so by adding some pretty strange ingredients. While these elements aren't exactly harmful, we aren't sure you really want them in your beauty products. One interesting ingredient often added to high-end face creams is baby foreskin. That's right. It's unsurprisingly controversial, but many brands and consumers swear by it. That's because it is believed that the leftover skin helps fight acne, reduce wrinkles, and even treats hyperpigmentation. The result of using creams with this ingredient is so amazing that Oprah famously endorsed a product that contained it. Surprisingly, there aren't any harmful side effects from using beauty creams that contain human foreskin, other than the strange looks you'll get from your friends. 
Another questionable substance high-end face creams use is something usually found in luxury eating establishments. That substance would be caviar, also known as fish eggs. Again, this isn't something that is harmful to use topically, but these eggs might not actually be caviar grade eggs. Brands often switch the name because fish egg extract doesn't have as nice of a ring to it as caviar extract. Either way, we doubt you want to slather unborn fish on your face, right? Perfume. People have been slathering on perfume to help them smell better for centuries. There are many people out there who literally hoard these amazing smelling concoctions. While we love perfume and couldn't imagine a world without it, we are also rethinking our devotion to these sweet smelling elixirs. That is because there is one ingredient found in perfumes that will make you sick to your stomach. Did you know that a common element added to perfumes is whale vomit, also known as ambergris? Yes. If you are feeling queasy, how do you think the whales feel? Seriously, why is something that seems like the opposite of pleasant smelling found in perfume. Apparently, ambergris helps preserve and enhance the smell of perfumes and colognes. This substance is usually found in the deceased stomachs of sperm whales and is expelled from the body through the whale's excrement or regurgitation. Just remember that the next time you're spritzing yourself with your favorite scent. Don't worry, that isn't the only thing in your perfume that will make you queasy. There's also a substance called civet. It sounds harmless, right? Not so much. Civet is basically the friendly sounding name for an ingredient that is expelled from civet cat's anal glands. Yep, we are pretty sure we have just ruined all perfume for you. Sorry everyone. Lipstick. Raise your hand if you are a fan of lipstick. While we can't actually see you, we are pretty sure that there are several hands in the air right now. Lipstick is one of the most common beauty products rocked by ladies and gents of all ages. While we must admit we can't get enough of lipstick on our pouts, finding out what some of them are made of is actually heartbreaking. Remember when we told you to stay away from eyeshadow because it has tallow in it? Well, the same substance rears its ugly head in lipstick as well. If the fact that tallow is made from animals, specifically lamb fat and cow brains, isn't enough to deter you, maybe the way the substance is made will make you rethink using lipstick. The process of making tallow includes separating the animal parts from a carcass and boiling it until a fatty byproduct is made. That byproduct is then added to the lipstick to help it stay smooth and creamy. Is anyone else cringing a bit? Who knew that boiled animal parts were hiding in their lipstick? Sadly, we aren't done with lipstick just yet. There's a pretty good chance that your favorite hue of lipstick was reached using crushed beetles called cochineal that help many products reach a nice shade of crimson. Is anyone else rethinking their beauty routine? React to this video in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out our friends at The Things who have more fun videos for teenagers.